Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and today we're gonna make some fabric pumpkins. I am super excited about this project. So I wanted to get it started and show you what I bought. So I went to Goodwill or Volunteers of America actually and I got two shirts, they were $1.99 a piece. One of them was a men's dress shirt. Now, depending how big you want your pumpkin would determine the size shirt you buy. I think this is a size 16 and I'm just cutting off the back. I cut off the back panel. You want a flat piece of fabric. I didn't do this on the, the video for you. It's just a lot of fabric to be dealing with, but that's, a, this one is made out of a men's dress shirt in this purple color. Then I bought just a women's, this is a size medium t-shirt, long sleeve, in the colors that I wanted. I wasn't really looking for styles and sizes necessarily. I was looking for the color that I want. And for this, we're going to cut it. Um, I'm just flattening it out. We're going to cut it from armpit to armpit. So easy. You can use sweaters, you can use shirts, you can get kids clothes, you can get fabric. If you have fabric in your stash, you can utilize that. This is really easy and beginner friendly, so I don't need that. What I want is this tube for this style of pumpkin. So I'm gonna show you two different styles. One, we're gonna gather it at the top and bottom and then sew it together with a needle and thread. On this one, we're gonna, I'm gonna pull you a little closer here. Here we go. On this one, we're gonna make it a flat bottom. So what I did, I'll show you. I just cut the back fabric, right? And you wanna fold it in half just to get the most fabric you can. What is happening here? Oh, there it is. I was like, what is under there? And then we're going to fold it in half and in half again. It doesn't have to be perfect. Oh, but you do want to see your shortest sides outside. So on this one up here, now that we have it folded, we're going to go. So we did in half and in half again. Now we're going to put our finger on this corner and we're going to make like a cone shape. And again, I always want this short side on top because that's how I'm going to know to cut it. To make a circle, the shortest piece becomes your point of your circle. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect. But I would like a, sh a circle shape. So I get rid of that. And so now this is what I have. And I cut out a circle, a darn good circle, if I if I don't say so myself. So this is step one, getting your shapes together. Now, I do need to get the fiber fill. It's in my closet. But the next step we're going to do is needle and thread or hot glue if you want. I'm using quilters cottony stuff. It's a little thicker. This is Coates and Clark. It's a heavier duty thread so it won't break. But you can do whatever you want. Uh, you can use the yarn. You can use thread. You can use embroidery floss. And all we're going to do, simple. Give yourself a little bit of room there and just go around the edge. Up and down, up and down. You do not want to lock your stitches by back stitching at all because I'll show you here and then I'll go off camera and do it. You want this fabric to be able to slide back and forth on this yarn on this thread and you're gonna because we're gonna gather it. Okay so I'm gonna go and just continue this process and it literally is so easy just in and out in and out and we're going to do the same thing on the bottom and top of this to gather them together in and out in and out around the top 
and around the bottom, separate pieces of thread. And then I'll show you how we gather them and secure them. All right, I just realized I can't sew the other pieces, mm -hmm. these, until I finish this because I need the needle that is attached. So I went around and I gathered the fabric. It is just that simple. And everything slides freely. But we need to stuff it first. So let's open it back up. And I have fiber fill behind me. Um, and actually they call this Buffalo something. I bought it on clearance after Christmas, but it's fiber fill. You can buy a bag of it, or you can take an old pillow that maybe has been, you know, too flat. You need to replace it. And you can take the stuffing out of that. Anything you want to stuff it with, old fabric scraps, you can chop them up. I think that's a very Victorian or Edwardian, I suppose, era. Now, you just want to determine how much filling you want to stick in here. And I think this needs just a little more. We'll do some sculpting of it, and that's such a fancy word for what we're going to do. But there we go. And then we're just going to take both ends. Now you don't have to take both ends, but I will take both ends and tie them up. There we go. I had pulled it too tight on that side. So I want both ends pulled in. You just kind of want to be delicate with this a little bit so you don't break your threads. That's kind of important. Um, mostly because then you have to start over. Nobody wants to do that. Um, the reason I'm doing two threads is I don't want my knotted end to pop through. And there are ways to avoid that, but I didn't do those ways this time. I may do those ways on the other one where you, you knot it into the fabric. Okay. So here I am. I've got my center hole all closed up and just squish your fabric together to make it easier. That is all. And then I'm going to knot it first to hold the thread in place. And then I'm gonna do some stitching, right? So I have that knotted, it didn't quite close up as much as I wanted it to, that's okay. And then I'm just gonna take it and sloppily pull this fabric together. There you go. And I'm just going to go back and forth through the fabric. Oh, I'm sorry, not even seeing what I'm doing. I'm literally just stitching this closed because I want it to be as tight as possible. There we go. To the, this top will be uh, glued as well, but I want it to look pretty. I'm also gonna tuck it in in a minute, but when I get the glue gun out, we're not there yet. And then I'm just gonna tie off this piece of thread Right, tie it off and snip. Here is my pumpkin. Now I'm just going to fluff it up and get it kind of in a pumpkin shape, right? But pumpkins really, who knows? Pumpkins come in all shapes and sizes. But I'm just gonna kind of mash the fiber fill together, give it a decent shape. This is the wood, I don't know if I showed you before, but this will be glued into the center once it's done, but we're not done yet. So what I need to do on this piece is cinch the bottom, stuff it and cinch the top. And then I will show you the next step. I'll bring it back and show you, but this is it. Um, yeah. It's just right now, you can even use shower caps to do this, guys. It's just, this is what, this one has the flat bottom. This one will not. But let's get this one stitched. 
Okay, we got the big guy done here. <laughs> and this is a big pillow. So I will tell you the t-shirt material does stretch, but I got it stuffed. And oh, I'm going to have to restitch that or when I, um, I can glue it together when I stick the stem in. All right, but right now what I've done is I've taken some of this burnout cotton. It doesn't have to be this. I just liked the color. And then I got some of these doll needles. They are long and they have a large eye. So the eye is important. Ooh, where are we at? The eye is important. So the, the yarn will go feed through it and it's pretty long. So what I did on the bottom is I found the center and I just eyeballed it push the needle up through the center. Then I'm pulling it through and I wanna loop it just to secure this bottom, right? That needs to be secured. Oh, I've got a knot somehow. I better, I better fix that. What happened here? You just wanna be careful you don't get knots in your yarn and it's very easy to do. There we go. So, and I wanna make sure that I leave this knot in the bottom, right there. Now I'm gonna come out and around and go back through the middle and I'm just sticking it in the middle. And then you wanna turn it over and try to find, try to find your middle with the tip of the needle. There we go. Needle came out the middle and we're going to do this. This is what I would consider sculpting the pumpkin. See, I'm giving it its side ridges to give it the shape so that we'll know it's a pumpkin. And then we'll go back around and you just keep doing this until you have as many ridges as you would like. And you just keep finding as best you can the center it's the bottom it's not that big of a deal but it will keep things on center and what i like about using the yarn is once i pull it pretty tight it does a fairly good job of staying right so i think i will continue and i'm just i mean there's no set an amount here of how many ridges you want it just until it looks and feels right to you and then i just straighten things out now if you want to see the yellow like i would like to see the yellow a little better i might go back through again and double up on those but i want to get my i'm gonna do eight on this size to pumpkin and if you don't like the way it's you know doing it it's stuffy guys so we can just go around here I know it's kind of fiddly but in person it's not it just looks awkward now and then I give it a little snug I'm gonna go through here I'm just trying to show you the whole process um on the larger pumpkin you're gonna need to and I'll show you here um, I need to knot this off and pull some more yarn, but we'll do that. What I want to show you with the longer needle, when you put it in, you're going to have to push your pumpkin down in the center to pull the, um, to find your needle because it's so deep, but you can do it. And this also will be a, a flatter, you know pumpkin and heck I could do them stacked if I had a different size but I don't but you want to push that down so I'm gonna go through and add all of my pieces I'm just gonna keep doing it till I have eight on this one and I will probably do more on this one but we'll see when I come back and then I will show you what it looks like all right so we got all of the yarn I did two wraps on each of these on the little one I just wanted to see some more of that 
gold in color. So I took the stem that I found. These are just some wood pieces I got from the Dollar Tree actually. Wrapped this one in a little bit of yellow just to give this specific one a little more texture and difference. So that one's done and I will show you a better view in a minute. And then this one, I love how bumpy it looks. Now, I feel like I can see more of the yellow on this one, so I'm just going to put the wooden stem again to make it just a little different, and I like the angle that it's cut. And plus, it'll help me with some of these uh, pieces of yarn that are sticking out. But it's rustic, so I'm just going to put, and I mean a lot of glue on here, like a full blob of glue. And I'm going to go right down in the middle and stick it in there and then not touch it. So it doesn't look like a big stem, but I feel like together these two are going to look adorable. I might need a third size. We'll see. But for now, this is what they look like. I need to let all the glue dry and then I'll get you a better angle of the pumpkins. There are the pumpkins, friends. Oh, they're so cute. I'm not sure they're gonna stay up here on my on my pantry, but I do enjoy them for right now. I think they're great. They're so pliable that they can go really anywhere, but I love them. And I hope you do too. All right, guys, have a good one. Bye.